Welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick, and we are here with Big, Big Smiles. Smiles. <laughs> the producer just said just before we go live, he's like, Big Smiles. So then I do one of these, and then he starts giggling. Well, something. the thing is, it's because like we got to time it, because you don't want a big smile too early, right. and then you're right. like ready to not smile when the, the camera comes on. But welcome back to uh, Man's Talk. I hope everybody had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Um, the weather was, it was so hot on Sunday. It was not supposed to be like that on Sunday. It's it that the rainy day? No, rainy day was yesterday, okay. Monday. Today is Tuesday. It's raining. Monday rained. Sunday, we had an event at my house, and it was like almost 90 degrees. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. was like, what happened to overcast? I was thinking, oh, good. It'll be cloudy. It'll be nice and cool. No. Mm. No, I uh, uh, I had a big day Saturday. Sunday, I just really oh, had Saturday to chill was, out. was uh, West Manchester Day. So we had um, also warm. MVP, which is the Merrimack Valley Porcupines Meetup. That has been going for almost 20 years. Yep. So we had General Don Bolda came to talk to people. We had Tim Baxter yep. came out. Um, he had his brother there. There, who I love is adorable. Taylor. Tim Baxter's brother Taylor is just he's he's a su- secret weapon. He just makes you happy. Well, he was just and he was uh, he's he, Tim's biggest fan, obviously. Yeah, and then um, and then uh, we had Manchester West Manchester Day, which was yeah. down in Lafayette yeah. Park. It was good, and that was really really fun. The kids it's, that come out for that seem to just have so much fun. I will say that Victoria and I did do the um, I don't know if you call it redneck cardboard sledding oh down the hill called, but i was like what's up with all the cardboard and they're like oh you slide down the hill on it and i was like oh oh, oh, oh i saw some kids yeah, doing I that mm-hmm. so we were down in lafayette park which is right in front of notre dame church mm. and uh uh, I, I know because at two o'clock the bells rang oh, for man, a there very a, long time. There was a time. wedding, and I was swear that what that's it was? what it was. And it, I swear the church bells rang for ten minutes straight. Oh, it least. was fifteen. I timed okay. it because I was like, "Whoa!" It was a lot of church I, uh, bells. It turns out one of the things I learned about myself was. Um, when I quit drinking, I, I like I'm very sensitive to like crazy ass noises. Well, that that was really and, loud. It was, it, and, and it like, didn't stop. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, I, I, what's the deal with the? I, I think mean, I'm gonna get one of those. Like I'm just gonna <laughs> become like a waka waka and just walk around with big <laughs> earphones. And then the last thing we did was we went up to Bardo uh, up in Croydon at Bardo Farm for their fifteenth uh, annual farm anniversary. Farm aversity is that a farm anniversary? Farm anniversary far, farm, that, <laughs> and uh, there were like hundreds of people. Nice. Really nice uh, fireworks, yeah. giant bonfire, beautiful potluck. I did my own personal tomato off because you know it's peak season now and everyone's stuff is ripe. So there were probably like eight. Different oh, kinds to- of tomato yes. dishes. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to yeah. make a plate of tomato yeah. stuff and be like, which one do I like So the I most? definitely have to remind my, remind, I did okay with tomatoes this year. Usually I forget to water things just in general. So I don't get anything. So I spend all this money on plants and I plant them and then I get nothing. I can't grow right? anything. I just, it's, which it's, is surprising. I feel right? like I should be able to. So but. this year I planted tomato plants and I did get actual tomatoes. But I'm And I was like, how come I have such small tomatoes? But I'm pretty sure I planted early girls because I don't have uh, the patience yeah. to wait until now for tomatoes. So my tomatoes are, you know, little, but they're good. But next year I have to rem- remind myself that I have to buy a non, like I have to buy I, a full blown tomato. So when I moved here 14, 15 years ago, uh, I'm saying these years a lot well, because, because yeah, uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of media. Maybe we could talk about some of it. And I'm like, you know, I got two things to say. Okay. So Back to the tomatoes. So when I moved from New York City, the first thing I planted at my house up in uh, Grantham, New Hampshire, was like a pot with tomato plants. And it was the first time I was like, oh, I'm going to like live off the land. I'm going to grow stuff. That's why I'm in New Hampshire. And I got exactly one, one to- hey, you got tomato. A tomato that was hanging there, and I was like, you know, I think it just needs one, one more day. day. And then if you're not careful, uh, you lose them. So I came back, and a squirrel had oh, no. eaten it. He had left it, but eaten it like an apple yeah. core, like right around. And so that is my only, hey, apparently I'm not very good at growing things, not but gonna, my friends are. So, you know, we wood. could all I, trade our strength. A lot of people talking about chipmunks and squirrels eating things, and I don't feel like I had a huge problem, maybe because I am planting them in buckets and not in a garden. 
Um, I know we have a squ- I mean, we have squirrels and we have a chipmunk and we have rabbits. So I thought for sure the so rabbits. So many bunnies. Mm, you too. Yeah, like I mean, I think they're 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 well, they, they they're do what bunnies do. Breeding like bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> breeding like rabbits. Which, by the way, small, unimportant trivia. Did you know that the Australian outback, which is a giant desert, Mm -hmm. was not a giant desert until the British Mm. brought rabbits to Australia and rabbits breed like rabbits. That's where the saying comes from and literally became a plague that ate out the entire outback. On a similar note, Dan and I have probably... 10 years ago now, went to on um, vacation in California and we went out to one of the Channel Islands and similar thing, um, there were used to be people that lived on this one particular island and they brought out pigs mm. and be- pigs and sheep and between the two of them they like ate everything Decimated, on the edge. It yeah. took like a decade for them to k- kill them all off so that they could try to, so things, you know, you don't well, always that, realize what you're doing. Well that and, and you know, in New England and certainly in New Hampshire, if you look back at the history of stuff, yeah. I mean, part of the reason why, like the Pine Tree Rebellion mm. of 1772, which was, you know, the king of England was like, hey, we're going to take all your pine trees because yep. we need these beautiful, strong straight. masts, yep. right? Straight trees to use as the masts on our sailing ships where they used. <gasps> Wind power? <laughs> I saw a literal ad today on Twitter that was like, we will return to wind power for ships. And I'm like, no, we really, are we progressing or what are we doing, folks? Anyway, with the masts, is um, it was because, and I didn't know this, that England, when they built out that navy, mm-hmm. so we're talking like late 1700s, early 1800s, had actually deforested England. Hmm. You know, so I guess my point is uh, things change yeah. and then they can be fixed yeah. and then, you know, they change again. I mean, apparently we've come full circle with uh, windmills, which is how I grew up. Both my grandpa- sets of grandparents had their own wells with windmills that would chug the water up. You know, people used sailboats. That's how yeah. my forefathers got to South Africa on a big boat with a big sail with a big mast. And so, you know, because someone had made a bad decision yeah. somewhere and then fixed it. Yeah. Um, so what you got, lady? So- this is not a happy story, and it's mm. a frustrating story. Um, so on Friday, am I doing that right? Today's yes. Friday was the second. Yes, Friday morning. Um, there was some a, crazy person. Well, there was a there was. A, I'm going to tell you the, the the short version, and I'm going to go back. So Friday morning, a 75 year old man walking on the rail train in Nuts Ponds was stabbed to death by a homeless person. That's the that's the summary. I found out about it because I read about it in Queen City Alerts and News. And I remember, I'm debating if it was Friday. It could have been. I remember sending it to Victoria because this is Victoria Sullivan's neighborhood. Now, this was at 1041 in the morning, this this post on Facebook. And I want to read it because I think it matters. Suspicious death in Manchester. And this is all in all caps. Reports of a stabbing on the rail trail near Bradley and Beach Hill. Suspect is now in custody. This is at 1041. The initial call in came, the initial call came in, actually, yeah, I'm wondering if this wasn't edited afterwards. The initial call came in for cardiac arrest on the rail trail. Engine 9 arrived and broadcast that they were asking for police. Dispatch said it would be a while and that they had no one available, based on it being a cardiac arrest call. The engine then replied it was an apparent homicide. They I don't know what this even means. They started the 20 minute timer assisting patient. There's some 20 minute timer. Don't know what that is. That's another day show. A later call said suspect walking south in trail towards Gold Street. No description given. Every officer seemingly was dispatched at the time. Just a note to those not reading the whole article. The police work very hard. They have more on their hands than they have more than their hands full with the crime calls. And just look at my daily log because this was posted by Scott Godzik who posts a daily police log. It's no secret that at times they are spread thin and not dispatched to non-emergency calls right away. So if this was a cardiac arrest, the police would serve no purpose. And, you know, that is not an emergency for the police. That's an emergency for the fire department. Suspect was caught at Walmart. After flooding the area, police saw a person matching the description they had, and he was arrested. Um, 
I'm not 100% sure that this is the original. I don't know that that's not edited because I'm not sure that when I read it, the suspect had been caught at 1041 in the morning. So somebody, this is what happened. So then now if you go back, because that only reason we knew of it at this point is because Scott listens to the fire Scanner, scanner because, because we're not allowed to listen the to the MPD scanner. Is scanner encrypted, and you're no longer allowed to hear when the because police because even though the government works for you, they are allowed to keep secrets from you, but you're not allowed to keep so secrets from them, which I, is the definition of a totalitarian police state. So I did try to pe go back and say, so what? Ha what ha by the afternoon, there were there was a. Um, release put out that said this man had been walking down the path a 911 call was made and the police responded and i remember reading that and thinking I well don't that's think, not true that's not actually how i remember it being the, happening the fire department responded they were told the we can't come because they they're overloaded with more pressing things than a cardiac arrest call um, at which point... But then the when it was a homicide, they could somehow well, they, make a very large presence Well, known. I mean, if it's a homicide, I would hope that they would make a large presence But known. weren't they all so busy that they couldn't go well, when this guy was dropping dead from a heart attack? Like, well, because, how do you do those two things? Well, because if there's a car accident with a, a rollover, which apparently happens all the time, if there's a car accident and there's a robbery and there's theft and there's somebody being uh, beaten over here with all the police are over there, a cardiac, a medical issue is Right, not but if those eight things were happening, how would they then be able to deploy all those people over here? Well, Do you see priorities. that it doesn't make sense? Well, it does to me. Because we're having the same argument that when your, uh, your noise on your lid and you were like yeah. why couldn't uh, like why did they initially say yeah. they they couldn't fix it but then they all came and i told right. you well and give do, them the benefit of the I doubt i do think that the police get dispatched based on the urgency and the the severity of the situation so i went back this morning because i was trying to you know i'm just trying to back it up and like piece it out so if you look on the fire log for the second um, there is a call, it, well, there is a log entry for 1030 that for Bradley Street and Beach Hill that says uncertain breathing. So I'm thinking, okay, this could be the initial call when somebody first saw the person that was killed down. They may not have seen that he was stabbed because, you know, you're, if you're like me, I'm not going, I, you know, I don't know. But some, somebody made a phone call, but that's at 1030. Well, then, that, that's on the that's on the log. At, that's on the log at ten thirty for the fire department. Now, if you go to the police log at ten thirty two, there is a log. So two minutes later, that says stabbing, one hundred three Driving Park Road, Nuts Pond. So, and then this post on Facebook was at ten forty one. That's what makes me think this might have been an edited post because this says he's in custody, and he certainly wasn't in custody ten minutes after the person called nine one one. What is not what I, what it frustrates me, and I think I hear this from so many people, something just doesn't add up because what is the police log like what is the what do these logs actually mean, and when are the times, and what are the things? Because the police call was two minutes after the fire department call? That's not even possible. There's no way the fire department got down on the rail in two minutes time. I, I'm not disparaging the fire department or the police department. Something, the math just doesn't make sense. You didn't, so these numbers that we Well, are, it's possible that two people call. No, no, but these aren't calls. These are dispatches. Oh, this is the log, see, because we see, also are only getting uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is not only are the police scanners encrypted, which just to remind folks back home, only happened in the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. That was never the case. There's always been a historic working together of decent you know, law, mindful citizens and journalists and people who like Scott, uh, right, Scott who Gossett, get the, who the message right. out. Um, working together to be like, hey, this is what's going on, but then also giving people in neighborhoods 
a way to know actually what's right. going on. So like right? Victoria Sullivan lives right literally down the street, down the trail from this. Should, so, should everybody who lives in that neighborhood not have known so, that there was a man who literally just stabbed somebody? Because my first report that I thought I read, the police said there was no danger to the public. So then um, after it was encrypted, Sorry. at some stage what they did is they, uh, they were like, oh, so we're gonna give you these logs. But here's a reality. We know for a fact the logs and the calls not do the not correlate. The press releases and the logs don't always correlate. So there is, there's, well, you know, I mean. you uh, got, there's, there's, there's this... information, but it's being presented after it has been through some process well, right, of I think something. What, I think that what I'm hearing from so many people is a lot more and more people seem to have less and less faith in the police. And, that's un and that, that is unfortunate because I do think that the police officers, the individuals that are actually on the police force, have an incredibly difficult job. And I, I you know, that's very, very difficult. And when you don't have the trusting or the well, they don't um, trust us. Well, but, so. but I'm, and I'm trying. I, I was thinking about this, and I'm like, well, I'm going to start comparing the department, dis distinguishing the department from the officers, because I have a more of a problem, I think, with the police department and the way they're choosing to disseminate or not disseminate information, versus the 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 actions of the police officers because they're just being dispatched you know like well and i think that's important they can't just go where they want to go they have to go where they're directed to go well i also think that's important from a perspective at, certainly at least my perspective is everyone in life is an individual right mm -hmm. so you have to judge not collective groups as you know, lazy people like to do they're like oh this one group or this one group i think you personally have to judge everyone on their own merit. The question comes in with something like the police department, and I mm -hmm. think you're right, is, okay, so we should judge individual officers mm -hmm. based on their actions. So, you know, when you see a video and they're beating yeah, down that, on some dude, you totally, get to right. judge them as people. But the problem is we've also created this system, this machine, this department, right, where there are protocols and procedures that, by the way, are not legislatively vetted. It's a huge problem, is the substrata of bureaucracy and red tape where everything's being done as policy and procedure. So they're actually literally doing unconstitutional things and then just going, well, that's protocol because it hasn't actually been vetted. And that's part of the problem. When we talk about government being too big, it's that strata, it's that unelected morass here in the middle that, uh, that, that we're talking about. So, I do want to, I am going to, I'm going to reach out to Scott Moore and try to, because he was, I was chatting with him this morning before the show and he seemed very frustrated because he doesn't really feel like the act, the, like he said, no, this is not the calls. Because the, what I see is people keep calling the police. And again, this is the department, not the individual police officers. People are calling the police department because their car is broken into or their backyard's broken into or there's a homeless person sleeping on their property or there's all this litany or somebody threw a rock at them or a, a piece of rebar over the, the bridge and it went through their car or somebody's been stabbed on the rail trail or whatever it is. And there's this litany of calls and all too often nobody shows up. The cop the police officers are not dispatched for those incidents. So then people get frustrated. So the next time somebody's breaking into their car, they don't even call the police anymore because why bother? So then we hear these numbers about crime going down. And if you look anybody in Man who lives in Manchester with a straight face and say, do you feel like crime is going down? They say, absolutely not. Now we have a, I have a friend who moved away 15 years ago and recently moved back and he is like, what the heck happened in 15 years? There are like homeless people everywhere. There's like crime everywhere. He goes, how did this happen in just 15 years? So there's a level of frustration. I do want to um, also, before we run out of time. So there is articles about the, the 75 year old man's name was Daniel Whittemore. He was, he lived in the area of the rail trail, often walked there um, and is now dead at the hand of a homeless man. Who had just been released out of well, bail again, worse. right? So this man was 40 years, this man that murdered him was 40 years, is 40 years old. He's from Mississippi, right? Um, 
He arrived in Manchester at the beginning of July of this year and was listed as homeless in court documents. He had previously been arrested in Manchester for an attempted stabbing, criminal threatening, and falsifying evidence charges, but was released on personal recognizance bail. Um, apparently, the Stanton Park, which is in front of the Double Tree, where I keep saying, so if you go to this nice hotel, there's this pile of homeless people there. There, what it even says, a popular gathering spot for homeless people. Um, there was this outbreak, and he was arrested there. Now that was at the be- that was in July. Then two days before the actual this murder, he was arrested in Nashua, which I want to come back to for disorderly conduct and two counts of resisting arrest. He was also released on the same day on personal recognizance bail. Um, and they say those court documents are uh, unavailable electronically, so they couldn't really give you more information. So we obviously have a huge problem with the bail reform bill. I, I realize there's like, you know, you got the Republicans yelling, and the the reality is, is uh, this is the, there's laws regarding uh, bail and how long you can keep somebody in all the situation. There was bail reform a few years back that was signed into law by Governor Sununu that they that there was a good intention to make it so that if you're just poor. If, and I agree with this. If you are just poor and you've never been arrested and you're arrested for a non-violent offense and you are not a threat to somebody, you should not have to sit in jail like that 18-year-old did for like eight months and then found be found not guilty, literally just because you're poor. So I get that side of it. But then the law, the way it was written, was interpreted poorly. They're, they're playing games. Someone here is doing something rotten, and I can't put my finger on it, but I suspect it has to do with the Hillsborough. Uh, the county jail system. Uh, th- yeah, system. system. Uh, so... You know, every so so when you, we're in one of these situations where where you know the the uh, everyone's saying it's this bail reform bill, but I'm a hundred percent confident that bill did not say if someone's going around stabbing people that we just keep kicking them out on PRs. I so, agree. So and I, I couldn't I, find. I, I actually went back. There was another bill. Ross Berry, Representative Ross Berry here in Manchester, had a bill in 2022 which I believe passed the House and for some reason got way late in the Senate. So I'm thinking, and I was, to be, I'll be fair, I was reading the law and I was not very deeply. I was like just figuring out, okay, I can peruse and usually figure out what happened. I was reading the existing laws and I was reading the bill and, I, and I'm thinking, I, I think we got too many words there. I think it's overly complicated and it, and it gave the court system I'm not saying so, an excuse. I think it gave the court system the, this misconception that they just had to well, allow well, everybody so to Well, so part of the problem is the jails are overrun. Why are they overrun? Because we put a whole a bunch of people who smoke pot in there. So here is how things should work. People who smoke pot should not be in jail. People stabbing people on rail trails should be in jail. This is not that hard to figure out. If there is an actual property crime, meaning you hurt someone, someone or you stole their stuff, you should be in jail. That is a crime. You have committed a crime. Well, you've been accused of committing a crime. This is the problem with bail. You're, everybody has a presumption of innocence, and I think that's the correct way. And if you're affluent, you can afford bail. And if you're dirt poor, you can't. So there's the weird, like, wait, so how do we make it so that that poor, the person who by you know for no other reason is stuck sitting in in valley street jail for nine eight ten months next thing you know they're addicted to drugs but that's beside, you know so <laughs> yeah, like how true. do we there's got to be a thing but you have it shouldn't be in this case the guy was arrested for attempted stabbing and let out then he was arrested in nashua which how do these homeless people get from city to city if they're homeless i'm confused but that's another discussion um so he gets arrested in nashua for you know disturbing but the also peace, what- but at that point why didn't he get put back in jail? You're not maintaining your your previous, your previous bond conditions. conditions so. Yes. So again, I'm saying someone's somewhere something is amiss, afoot. Uh, so, something strange is going on. On the lack of information stuff, and I feel like you and I both read the newspaper. Um, I try to read it most days. I might not have read it one day this weekend, but I usually go back and read the previous day because I try to. Um, and I follow a few different groups on Facebook that tend to have people posting stuff. And I read this because I don't want you to think this is the only weird incident. Um, it, this says it was three days ago, so I'm thinking this happened on Saturday, if I recall correctly. 
Um, there was a report that there was a shooting on Sullivan Street, which is on West Manchester, and this woman posted, I'm semi-new to the area, I don't know all the street names, but we were at the playground by Parkside and walked straight through like we were going towards Bartlett, toward the hiking trail, and then there were like seven cruisers and an officer running with what looked like a rifle, and officers scattered about, and there was EMS waiting by the Polish market about a block away, then we heard a gunshot, and we just ran home, with, and this was the same in incident that... the matches the time that there was reports of gunshots on Sullivan Street. And I'm like, okay, but why isn't that in the, like, the news? So somebody shot something. Somebody well, was well, shot. So, you know, like, where well, is the information for the average Joe so that they can feel It's confident? not in the news because the people who used to put it in the news, yeah. the bloggers and the, the people the who follow the cops or who pay attention or just concerned citizens in their neighborhoods don't have no. access to any of the information because we've encrypted and the scanners. then we are told this is the story and may i remind everyone back home the reason they encrypted the scanners was because we caught them out when they locked down an entire neighborhood in 2016 for five to seven hours after the suspect had been apprehended. And because we could put together the actual timeline from start to finish based on all the information, not just the information that the state wanted us to know. They were like, well, we're going to solve this problem because you guys are making us look bad by just not giving so, you the whole story. A couple things I, 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 be, I believe I know about the whole encryption process is prior to when they encrypted the scanners, they always had the ability to switch to an encrypted channel. So in the, because they'll, the argument will be, this is to help protect police officers. Fair. I'll give you, I don't want to do things that are going to endanger the lives of police officers. In my opinion, the majority of things on the blog anyways, or on the, whatever it's called, the log, don't seem to be life-threatening towards police officer type of incidents. So why can't, they could, if they chose to, still have, you know, the regular calls be on the on uh, non-encrypted channel and when there's that incident where maybe there is a man running around with a gun that the police are literally chasing maybe that at that point it's moved to the encrypted channel so that the police can finish their job i'm okay with that but it can't be it shouldn't be every call so i i'm of the mind and we're out of time unfortunately but i'm formulating this idea where i'm like look if we're gonna live in a panopticon which is the the name that they give where everything is just surveilled which is kind of where we're heading towards then all of it needs to be public and it needs to be in the cloud and then we can go back and we can look um because there's so much data there's so much information why don't we just make it all open and accessible so that together we can all come to the bottom of the truth there is objective truth and some of us like it and we like to get to it which is very very hard when everyone's hiding just so a little I bit i do want to take a minute and remind people that next tuesday is state primary election day um there are there are primaries for us on from the republican side anyways there are primaries for u.s senate u.s congress i know there's some floatarial districts here in manchester that have um state rep um, primaries. There's a primary for one of the county offices. I know some of the Democrats have um, state rep primaries. Uh, there's primary for the governor. There's like there's things to vote for. So please do go out on Tuesday and vote in the state primary. Um, you will see names on the ballots of people who do not have primaries, like Carla and I. Dan and I are both on the ballot, but you can vote for two. So there's no loser um same in your district with you and Brittany Payne. yeah and if you have any questions or want to make sure that you are voting for true liberty candidates mm. please go to libertyballot.com yep. that yep. will tell you yep. who is solid who stands for yep. human rights who actually wants to protect and help all granite staters and not just their friends yep that's all we got for today um we'll be back next week i think i'll be here it's gonna be primary day i'll have to squish that into i'm doing a bunch of running around we'll helping see a bunch how people. it goes but um have a wonderful week. After today, it'll be back to sunshine, and um, we'll see you next week. Take Bye. care. Bye.